Hello everyone, I'm Julia Pott. Uh, I'm the creator of Summer Camp Island, uh, which is a show about two best friends, Oscar and Hedgehog, um, who go to a summer camp for the first time. And as soon as all the parents leave, all of the strange stuff starts to come out and show itself. So the camp counselors are really teenage witches, and there are yetis and monsters under the bed, and the horses are really unicorns, and there's a shark living in the retractable wall of the swimming pool. And it's all about them getting used to this new paranormal activity and the strange new world, um, but having each other to get through it together. Oscar and Hedgehog's best friendship is actually based on uh, my best friendship with uh, Tom Brown, who's my friend that lives in New York. When I first moved to New York, um, from England. I, uh, I was really, really homesick and I miss my mom and dad and I miss my friends and it was all so new. Everything felt like ever so slightly different and strange. And then Tom Brown moved there a few months after me and it suddenly felt so much easier to navigate the world with him there. And I had some like piece of comfort from home that I could like run around with. So when I was coming up with the idea for summer camp, I wanted to do something that was sort of an equivalent to homesickness when you're a kid. And going to summer camp for the first time felt like the closest parallel to moving to a new city. And I wanted these two best friends to be based on me and Tom because um, they're sort of this unconditional love bond together. Like they support each other and they get in fights, but they're, they're always there for each other. And you know that it's sort of an unquestioning bond. In the new season, um, we sort of, we're getting to know Hedgehog a little bit more. Like she's getting into witch training. She's being brought in by the coven of witches and she's, uh, we see her growing as a witch and learning and we, we see new parts of the island that we haven't seen before. They're a little bit more magical. We learn some of the backstory of how magic disappeared from the world and magical logic in general. And then we also get to know Oscar's magical purpose um, throughout this season. So yeah, we're gonna get to know Susie a little bit more in this new season. Um, we have this uh, four part arc coming up, which is sort of the backstory of how Susie and Ramona became best friends, how Susie and Ramona got to the island, and I'm just, I'm really excited for you guys to see us developing her relationship and her relationships with other people and sort of why that she is the way that she is. Although she needs no excuse for the way that she is. I think she's perfect. Guess I've got a secret admirer. When I was growing up, I was really interested in filmmaking and storytelling and animation was also really appealing to me because I could do it in my own home. And it was this thing that was just like solely mine that I could play around with. And it feels like you're bringing something to life and it's so satisfying and it's really peaceful. My favorite part of the animation process is once the story's all in place and you're just sort of animating it through, you're like doing these keyframes and then you're doing the in-betweens and you're just like, you can have like music on or the radio and you can just like sit in your room and be like just getting into the minutia of the details of everything and how something moves and like flipping it up and down and just seeing like how it's all coming together. And then when you scan it in and you like comp it all together and you see it moving, it's just, it's, it's deeply satisfying. <laughs> Hi everyone, um, really excited to share an exclusive clip of Summer Camp Island with all of you. Um, I hope you like it. No, 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 stay. Now sit. Good boy, you're so adorable. Who's a good boy? Yeah. <laughs> so you want to change Puddle's star sign, huh? Exactly. We just need you to move 14 degrees counter sunwise and Puddle should turn from a Gemini to a Cancer. And then we'll finally be able to marry. Right. I'm afraid it can't be done. What? But it has to be. They're in love and they want to express their love through the law. There's a reason we're born exactly when we're born. If I change Puddle's birth chart, he'll be different. He might not be the same Puddle anymore. Aww. I like you the way you are, Puddle. I'd rather call off the wedding than change you. It was too good to be true. Let's go home. Good luck. <sighs> I need to clean up this mess. You may not be able to marry in your planet, but what about that one? I still have those mood rings with me. Puddle, you are my perfect snuggle boo. I vow to hug you forever with my heart. King, you are my dream boo. I will float beside you always through storms and through stars. Bye bye. 
the power of the universe vested in us by way of this friendship, we now pronounce you married. Okay, everyone, uh, now I will be teaching you how to make a string cup phone system. The show is primarily about magic and witches, um, but now we will be using the magic of science and physics, magic in real world, hiding in plain sight, to make a string cup phone system so that you can talk to your best friend. Um, we have a string cup phone system in Summer Camp Island. Oscar and Hedgehog talk to each other on string cup phone systems. Uh, it's a very charming and intimate way to talk to your best friend. Okay, so you need two paper cups, a pair of scissors, a needle or a pencil, uh, because we're poking a little hole in the bottom of the cup, some string, uh, you can use fishing wire um, or this is just parcel string that I'm using here, and uh, things to decorate the cups with afterwards. So now that we have all of our things, step one is poking a hole in the bottom of the cup. So I'm taking my little needle and if, like me, you find it really hard to thread string uh, through tiny holes, um, you want to you wanna poke a relatively weighty hole in the bottom of the cup. All the little holes are making friends with each other. You're making the hole bigger and bigger by poking little dots and then smushing it around. And then, take your string. So this goes up to 100 feet. So your friend could be 100 feet away from you and you will still be able to hear them through this cup. When you pull it taut at the end, the sound waves of your voice travel along the string and that's how you can hear each other. Tie a couple of knots. Um, I'm gonna tie a couple of knots so that it doesn't just fall on right back through the hole. And then pull it taut. Wonderful, okay, here we go. Look at that, gorgeous. So now you have the string cup phone system. It works, it is a working device. Uh, you have to pull it tight. Piece of advice from when I tried it earlier, it's good to cup your, cup your hands around the cup when you're whispering all your secrets to your friend because number one, then no one can hear your secrets and number two, it just works better. You also look like a little duck, which is cute. So you could actually even like draw a little duck face on here. That's not what I'm gonna do, but you could and I bet it would look brilliant. Okay, so once you have this, now the fun part is the decorating the cups, however which way you like. I've gotten out all of my favorite pens. Uh, these are all of the colors that I own. Uh, a weird amount of brown, which I didn't know about myself. You can draw on whatever you like. I'm going to do a little drawing of Susie, um, our grumpy witch. You can decorate all around so it looks different however you look at it. So, okay, so let's draw Susie. I like to draw the colors first and then go around it with a pen. Um, I think it's nice to lay out the colors and sometimes they just look good on their own. You don't need to go around it with a pen because it looks uh, it looks great all by itself. Um, these are Copic markers, but you can use any markers that you have on hand. Um, okay. I already personally think she looks a little wonky, but I'm not going to stop because I've been trying not to stop drawings at the beginning that I don't like because sometimes they turn out to be my favourite drawings. Um, okay, so we have her little hat. She's got a little green band there, go get that in. And then, whoa, look at that, that looks crazy. Very weird drawing. <laughs> Um, your little marker, thinner marker, and start drawing in the details. Um, so that's Susie on the cup, um, looking grumpy. Uh, and then you can decorate all the way around. So here are a couple that I did earlier, which has uh, Oscar and Susie, Oscar and Hedgehog on this cup with some rainbows. And then Susie and her witch pals, Betsy and Alice on this cup, with little stars and moons and hearts to represent them. And then, yeah, give one to your friend and one to you. And uh, you can tell them all the things that you've been up to. And um, try not to get your string tangled like I did. 
Thank you so much for watching. Uh, you can watch more episodes of Summer Camp Island on HBO Max. Hi, my name is Mike Chillian and I am the creator of Tig and Seek. I'd love to do some fun activities with you today while we're quarantined. But before I jump into that, I'd like to uh, talk about my show just a little bit. Tig and Seek is a show about a boy named Tiggy and his pet cat, Gwee Seek. Seek for short. They go everywhere together, but mainly they work at the Department of Lost and Found. So it's a place where if you lose something, uh, you call the department and they will send out Tiggy and Gwee Seek to come out and find whatever it is you're missing. One of my favorite aspects about the show is that Gwee Seek, Tiggy's pet cat, is actually smarter than Tiggy, but doesn't even know that she is. Uh, Cause she has the ability to spontaneously build a gadget out of everyday objects. She wears a pair of goggles on her head and whenever she lowers them, she goes into like a science mode. She'll build a gadget and raise the goggles back up and then go back to being a regular cat. It's a pretty weird aspect about the show, but I just love it and it's pretty fun. As a kid, I, I like to draw cool robotic machinery that would be used for like everyday items such as um, like combing your hair or brushing your teeth or, or like opening a doorknob or something, something, anything weird like a, something that would like turn the pages of a book for you. They always look fun and I love, I love seeing how gears and, and cranks get turned if you pull something and then that will set something else off and it's, it's, uh, it's very, it can be very imaginative and, and, and creative to have to come up with those kinds of gadgets for the show. So I was thinking as a fun project since we're stuck indoors, uh, we could build a cool gadget that uh, we use from different items from around the house, just like Gweezy would. Step one, gather all of your items. Uh, I just picked a bunch of random things from around the house, an old trumpet, uh, part of a coffee machine, an, an old guitar pedal, uh, and then some other random things over here. Step two, figure out what you're gonna make. Oh, I know, I'll build a gadget that cleans my glasses. These get dirty and smudged all the time. So if I had a cool little gadget that could clean these, that would be awesome. Okay, let's start building something. Usually Gweezy kind of wraps these things around this thing and then, yeah, I think that's looking kind of like a, hmm, uh, jeez. Ta-da! It's a... Uh, All right, it's all finished. Let's see if it'll clean these puppies right up. Oh no, I don't think my gadget worked at all. Ah, these are even dirtier than before. Oh, you know what? I should ask my cat to help me build my gadget. My cat's name is Miso, like Miso Soup. Miso! Miso, can you help me build my gadget? I just need you to fix it. It's a glasses cleaning gadget. Fine then, don't help me. See if I care. Just wanted to do something fun for this virtual event. Now I got gross glasses and my cat won't help me do anything. Ugh, what am I gonna do? I got, I'm, I'm, out, I'm out of ideas. Uh, here I am trying to make something fun for, for all the kids out there. Hmm? Whoa, Miso, did you put that gadget together all by yourself? Ah, oh, cool. Let's see if it works. kids that's how you build an everyday gadget from home by having a really smart cat help you 
Now it's time to share a sneak peek of Tig and Seek launching this week. Here is an exclusive look. Morning, Glee Seek. Ugh. Come on, there's a whole world of stuff out there just waiting to get found. Welcome to the Department of Lost and Found. Hello. I'm Tiggy, your friendly finder. Tiggy knock! I can find this thing with my eyes closed. Here, watch. This is my friendly finding feline, Squeezy. No seek. Do not knock that jingly dodecahedron out the window. Nuritza, we haven't really thought this through. If I thought things through, I wouldn't get up in the morning. Good as new. It wasn't used in a lavatory, was it? This all seems like too much to deal with right now. I just want to eat my vegan pad thai. Mm. Boss! What's wrong? I got something in my teeth? Give me Tiggy and Queasy, pronto! Wait a second, this isn't even plugged in. Something's weird. Queasy, you're, you're good with building stuff. This is the most brilliant thingy doodle you've ever made. Seek, I really think you need to work on your aim. Give it. Tiggy, you're fired. Ooh, popcorn. Tig and Seek. Greasy, you built a pie machine? Why didn't you build this thingy to start with? Five stars coming up. Skibbity doobity do. Barry's coming at ya. Holy moly. Queasy, this is the most brilliant thingy doodle you've ever made. Hey, shoo, shoo. Mmm, smells good. So let me think. If we bake one pie every minute and Prangle comes back in 20 minutes and 10 minutes have already passed, that means we gotta speed this baby up. Whoa! You see, that's how it's done. You spot a problem, you solve it. Things going too slow, speed them up. Piece of cake. Or a piece of pie, if you know what I'm playing. <laughs> now all we gotta do is kick back and breathe in the sweet, salty smell of strawberry. Huh? What was that? I could have sworn. We see? Yep, salty sweet, just like the recipe. Thanks, and don't forget, Tig and Seek launches this week on HBO Max. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Stephen Neary. I'm the creator of The Fungies, um, which is a new cartoon show that's coming to HBO Max. The Fungies is a show about, you guessed it, fungies. Um, fungies are little tiny mushroom people living on prehistoric Earth. This is the, the paper mache model from the intro of the show. So the fungies all started when I was up late one night on Wikipedia, like, like people do, and I was, I was looking at these things called prototaxites um, that were these, these huge like mushroom things that covered the earth, um, I guess like 400 million years ago. And that got me thinking about, you know, what, what life was like for me a long time ago, what it's like the experience of, of being a kid, and what if kind of the earth was a kid almost and could see itself for the first time. So I know that all sounds a little bit weird, but it, it definitely is a, a throwback to, to me growing up in the, in the 90s, um, running around with my, my family, the Neary's, and um, just riding bikes around the neighborhood, looking at bugs, collecting leaves, all that, all that fun stuff. 
Um, how do you get that in a colorful world with dinosaurs, basically? One, one fungi in particular, Seth, is a 10-year-old fungi kid Wondrous. who uh, loves science and he loves exploring and he loves going out um, and exploring all that young Earth has to offer. So volcanoes and dinosaurs, you name it. And he lives with his family and uh, he goes to school and he's always trying to get the other fungis excited about science and exploring and learning. And um, he usually gets in a little bit of trouble along the way. Seth has a really interesting, you know, family dynamic with his family members. Uh, he lives, uh, he shares a room with his older brother, Pascal. Um, so Seth is very headstrong and very confident in uh, exploring and science. He, he wants everybody to kind of look at him and see what he's working on. And Pascal is, is very much um, this shy, older artist living at home. I'm painting you a surprise get well card. Seth kind of pushing his brother to, to get out there more and Pascal pushing his little brother to be more sensitive. And they both live with, with their mom, Dr. Nancy, who's the fungi town doctor. Oh, no, 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 you're sick. Seth also has these two little siblings, the twins, and the twins are just kinda, yay, no, my bet. We're not really sure what they, what they are yet or what they're gonna become. They love to just kind of, uh, run around and, and break stuff, really, um, which is fun for everybody. The great thing about prehistoric Earth is there are all these friends that can stop by and say hello all the time. For example, Pam the Dinosaur. Pam is Seth's friend. She lives outside of Fungi Town, and, and Seth is always really interested in her because she is a dinosaur and because she has this completely different way of, of living that's different from his way of living. Um, so she doesn't live in a town with other fungies. She's uh, out on her own. She's very instinctual. She's always hunting to survive. So there's a lot that Seth can learn from uh, Pam, the dinosaur. Um, in addition to dinosaurs, there are all these other creatures like crustaceans and different kinds of prehistoric uh, creatures and kind of monsters. Um, and it's really this huge world where, where anything can happen. Underrated. So today we're gonna to be drawing Seth from the fungies. And Seth has a, has a pretty simple design. He's a circle for a body. And then we're gonna draw some blobs on top. Draw a little eyeball, that's where his head is. And then we can draw a mouth on his body. Hey! And then go ahead and draw the uh, limbs. You know, he doesn't need all of his limbs, so Maybe one fell off, because fungies can pop their limbs off and on. So here we go, his leg fall off. It's okay, he can, he can put it on later. And a great way to practice at home is um, if you want to go ahead and paint circles for all the different sets. Um, here's one here that I painted earlier. We can go ahead and draw, you know, with a crayon. There's his head. Cool. There's his arms. Hello. He's waving, hi. And then his legs. Then we can go ahead and give him, give him his mouth here. Hi. So yeah, that's how you draw Seth. And um, the cool thing about fungies is they come in all different shapes and sizes, so you can even go ahead and make a whole sheet of different colors and just go crazy drawing your different fungies. If you wanna make them look like you, that's cool. If you want to give them, you know, eight arms and legs, that's that's fine too. Hey, we're fungies. What's up? And then um, one of the cool things about fungies is they can actually form, you know, these these uh, they can combine their limbs into different vehicles and stuff, and uh, dinosaurs. So here's Seth um, riding on top of the fungi cycle. When he gets bored or of walking, you know, he likes to use um, other means of transportation. So here's like uh, his little siblings, the twins, forming the, um, the front wheel here. And here's Pascal, his brother, who's kind of the body of the motorcycle. He's smiling here. And then on top of Pascal is where Seth sits so he can steer. Hi, it's me. Yay. And then he can sit on top of Pascal and steer and everything. And then the other twins form the, uh, the back wheel.
so pretty cool. <laughs> and that's how you draw Seth from the Fungies. Hi everyone, I can't wait to share what's coming up next. It's this exclusive clip uh, from the Fungies, and let's take a look now. I'm so excited, I can't wait! We are the Fungies! This is Seth. I want to follow my curiosity. I'm an explorer. Huh? We discover, we leave no stone unturned, no hole unlooked in. The universe is so big, I've barely seen any of it. Exploring can lead to exciting new discoveries. Everybody run! Not again. Hey, you two. What a day. With the help of his friends and family, that's the spirit. Especially his big brother, Pascal. Ooh, I got my floaties on and I'm ready to party. Whoa. Seth is always ready for adventure using his special talents. Fungi Extendor! I didn't know you could do that. Come join the Fungi! Oh yeah, great idea! Or a brand new world made just for you too. If you're inclusive, inquisitive, respectful and kind, you can be a Fungi too. The Fungies, new series streaming August 20th. Only on HBO Max. Thank you for watching the HBO Max Cartoon Network Studios collection. Um, we hope you had fun. Uh, I know we did. Um, stay safe and uh, keep watching. Bye.